I went to bed last night not feeling great. Part of me thought it was the Bournemouth save, but when I woke up this morning, I was achy everywhere. I'm running a slight fever. The thought of food just kind of makes my stomach do flips, so I'm definitely coming down with something. Luckily, I have enough PTO at work that I could just take the day off. The original plan was just to lay in bed, watch Netflix, and things like that. And then I thought, I got FM19 downstairs on the laptop, and it's calling to me. And it's saying, you can do better than this. Come prove me wrong. And so here I am to prove it wrong. I'd love to say things are better, but they're not. They're not worse, they're just not better. We had our youth intake, and if you were around for my Enfield town save, you know how horrible they were there. This one is way, way better than that, and it only took one player to do so. That's coming up. We got a game against Cardiff coming up, and hopefully we can still keep our job. My name's FM Jellico, and this is the Palace March, Episode 7. If you followed my Enfield Town save, you know one of my biggest complaints was the quality of the youth intakes I had. I had a really good head of youth development. And for a team that started in the Vanarama South, he was with us the entire time. And every year, no matter what I did to increase the youth level and the youth recruitment and so on and so forth, our youth intakes were god awful. I think my best youth player was a one-star current, three-star potential player. So when I started this Palace save, one of the things I wanted to do was improve that. Palace already has a better recruiting system and a better youth rating and youth facilities. I, I built Enfield Town up to great youth facilities, but one of the things I wanted to do was to get probably one of the best young head of youth developments in the game, Christian Speakman. Working with youngsters, 20, player ability, 16, player potential, 17, determination, level of discipline, motivating are all fabulous. And his specialty is England. I actually paid a nice chunk of money to get him, this 4.5K, I believe is after taxes. But if I have my way, he is never, ever leaving the club. That said, youth intake is here. Let's take a look. Okay. It's not the disasters I encountered at Enfield. Ian Payne, a midfielder. One and a half star current ability, four star potential. Not bad. 12 acceleration, 14 stamina, 15 years old. Definitely potential. I'm not going to go through all these, just like the first... Well, the first three, because after that, they, they kind of fall off a cliff. Apologies, had to sneeze there. Lachlan Williams. Vance midfielder on the left side. Wow, really good physicals already for a 15-year-old. 11 acceleration, 12 agility, 12 pace, 12 stamina. Love the 16 determination. 10 crossing, 10 technique. Oh, he could definitely get playing time on a Vanarama team. Henry and Knee, goalkeeper. Not bad. Okay, physicals. Okay, goalkeeping skills. The mentals aren't bad, but they'll get better as he gets older. Well, these three definitely have some potential. The rest, uh, you know, one determination, no. One determination, no. Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to look at these offline. Chances are I'm just going to end up signing them all anyways. I mean, just to give you an idea of what I've been off to during the rest of the year. That's the uh, under-18 team. It's the uh, This is the uh, under-20 team. I actually have to scroll down quite a bit because there are a bunch of players on there. The uh, guys in blue are all players out on loan. And actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and get rid of those here real quick. So I've got a ton of players out on loan. That's that's the plan, really. I mean, I scout players. If they have a decent amount of potential, I bring them in. If I can loan them out, I will loan them out and possibly make a little bit of money on them if I know they're not going to get playing time here. Uh, Iker Martin is one of the players I brought in earlier in the season. Got him on a free. 
Uh, same with Safwan Obai. He's actually got a couple games uh, in the senior team already. So uh, almost all, if not all, the players who are two stars or lower are not going to be on the team next year. And that goes for probably half my under-18 squad as well. And I believe I've already told the DOF not to renew their contracts. TPE is at Taipei. Okay. Cool. So, oh, Jake Kirby is the uh, defensive left back I found on a free as well. Good potential there. So we'll just have to see how they develop. All in all, this is a decent intake. It's a hell of a lot better than anything I had at Enfield, and for that, I'm already happy. So, I'm going to take a look at the rest of these, and uh, we will be back in just a bit. And well, one of the other things I've been doing is fiddling around with how I place my mic and how I have it angled and everything like that. Hopefully, the sound will be a bit. Hopefully, the sound will be a bit better. Uh, consistent quality as the videos progress. We'll have to see. I'm angling for a new microphone next year. This one's not even a year old. It's a blue snowball. It's, it, it works great, especially once I got the filters and that figured out. But one of the things that I noticed, because more often than not, I listen to YouTube videos at work. I can tell when the sound goes in and out. And it's just a bugaboo of mine. The downside to that also is that when it comes to all things audio related, I am not the person you want to talk to. I just I know it sounds good to me, and I think if it sounds good to me, it'll sound good to other people. So that's my goal for these videos, making them sound good to me. As you can see on the schedule here, after Bournemouth, we've done really well. But at the same time, we keep getting these notifications from the press saying, get a good result or the board's going to fire you. But the board hasn't said anything to me yet. Anyhow... After Bournemouth, we were away at Southampton, and we drew that one all. Again, a late game goal to claw the draw back. Charlie Austin in the 92nd minute. This has got to be an FM19 thing. Luka Milovic had a 58th minute penalty kick. The team as a whole was okay. Ajeti is still getting his sea legs, as it were. But we were better than Southampton this game. 11 shots, 6 on target. They're 6-2. We had our chances. We just didn't make the most of them. And a 90-second minute goal. In like a 94-minute game, it's just. We then played Man United, who at one point in time were 19th in the league. They fired Moreno, they hired Pellegrino, and since then, Man United has bombed its way up the table. They're currently in 8th place, and they have an outside shot of getting European games again. My goal this season is to finish above Man United, and this game went a long way to helping us do that. Ajeti had a goal at the end of the first half. Uh, Benasser had an 82nd minute goal. Hote had an 85th minute goal off a set piece was really nice. Victor Lindelhoff getting sent off for a second yellow card in the 67th minute really helped us out. I'll be the first person to admit that. What also helped us out was the fact we had 13 shots, 6 on target, to their 10 and 4. This was a solid game all around, with the exception of a couple performances by the wingers. And that's to be expected. Zaha and Adams were not great. But Zaha did a good job of keeping the defenders occupied. Aarons came on for Adams, created two chances, had two key passes. We could have scored a couple more goals, but De Gea was De Gea, even though that 6.2 rating doesn't look like it. He had a couple real brilliant saves. But we got one up on Man United. Next up, a game against mid-table Watford, which we won 2-0. Milovic, a 54th-minute goal. Wilfred Zaha, a 93rd-minute goal. Again, a late-game goal. We just outclassed Watford this game. 21 shots, 13 on target, huge possession advantage. They had a couple of really good performances. Decore was on an 8-6 and was the player of the match. He just he shut down Zaha, which seems kind of odd to say because Zaha did have the goal. It was you know a 93rd-minute goal. He ended up on a 7-4. Until then, Zaha was like on a 6-2, 6-3 the entire game. Decore just locked him down. I want to show you this Milievic free kick, and it highlights one of the things that I absolutely love that Sports Interactive has put in the game this year. This is about 32, 33 yards out. That's just, that's insane. I watched it in the 2D, then I saw the 3D replay, 
had to go back and pause the game and watch it again and again and again. Just a second here. We are going to go TV. That was an amazing goal. And he has had a really good season for us to the point that clubs in China are coming after him now. They're offering 30 million pounds for him. I just I don't want to let him go. I need him for next season. After Watford, we were away at Everton, and we drew this game to all. St. Tosin, a goal right before the end of the first half. Bernard, a 69th-minute goal. Leighton Barnes missed a 10th-minute penalty kick, and they had a goal that was disallowed in the 82nd minute, caused a bit of a controversy. Ajede wasn't having the best game. He picked up a slight knock. I pulled him off, put Sorloth in. And he responded with a brace of goals in two minutes. I thought we had a victory wall in hand. I went back to playing cautious slash counter. And then Bernard scored. Then we had the 82nd minute goal. I literally about fell out of my chair and wanted to throw my hat and bang the wall. And then I looked up and saw it been disallowed. This was, I'm not going to say an even game. They had more shots, more on target than us. We had 17 shots, six on target. Everton was the better team today, and they should have won. They had a couple goals that Hennessy turned away. Hennessy had a 7-5, was absolutely fabulous between the sticks. And he's the primary reason we drew this game. Although, to be fair, Sorloth did his own part as well. So today, we are playing Cardiff. They are bottom of the table. We're switching the formation up just a little bit. We're going back to that, I call it a 4-2-4, to get both Sorloth and a Jedi to get both Sarloth and Ajeti on the field at the same time. This should be an easy game for us. That said, it's probably going to be a late-minute goal that seals it. So I'm going to go through, make sure I got the best 11 on the field, the best 7 on the bench, and we will come back with a Cardiff game in just a bit. Well, I do have a bit of a cough going on as well, so if the video cuts out every now and then, that's why. I don't know why they're calling this a 4-1-2-3. It's not a 4-1-2-3, but this is a 4-2-4 we're playing today. Hennessy in goal, Riedewald, Hote, Tompkins, and Wambasaka is the defensive back four. Benasser and Milvievic as the midfielders. Zaha and Adams as the attacking midfielders. Sorloth and Ajeti up top as the strikers. No, oh, we're not even five minutes into the game, and Zaha has been injured. Okay, well, that's why we have errands. Corner kick. Grand fist. A nice stop by Hennessy. Oh, kicked away by Hote. Now it was close. I think I'm going to speed up the highlights here. Just one more tick. It's almost like here is too fast, or here is too slow, and here is too fast. If there was an in-between, I think that'd be great. Delo to Gunnarsson. Oh, Milvievic intercepts the pass. Out to Sorloth to Aarons on the left, driving forward. Blows by. One guy crosses it in. Ajede is there, and he scores. That was a nice move by Aarons. He just blew by the defender there on the left. Oh, nice header by Ajede, too. Okay, that was nice. That was, that was well struck, as they say. Coming up on halftime here. Pretty even game so far, stats-wise. We've had five shots, two in target to their six and one. The Ajeti goal has put us ahead. The Zaha injury is... Oh, it's a foot injury. I hope it's not potentially year-ending. Wambasaka. Out to Adams. To Milovievic. To Benasser. Back to Adams. Drives right. Surrounded. Tried to play his way out of trouble. Lost the ball. He, that's one of his traits that... I'd love to try and train out of them, but it's just not taken. Delo on the free kick to Arter, to Gunnarsson, back to Delo, to Camarasa, to Arter. Granfus has the ball all the way over the left side of the field to Dodo. To Hollet, he centers it in to Kedia, but it's knocked away. Is that a penalty? Ah, oh, it's a penalty. Okay. Come on, Hennessy. Granfus. And the game's tied. Well, Hennessy guessed right, but he was too slow. Have we been defensive the entire game? I am just now noticing that. 
We're not going to make any changes just yet. We're going to go a little bit further. Antonio Tenekedia. And his, okay, I don't know what that shot was, but okay. Hennessy, out to Hoped. Hit the Nasser, and his pass is intercepted by Antonio. Nikedia, a jetty intercepts that ball. Oh, well, Milvievic recovers it. Adams, on the right side, centers it to Milvievic, to the Nasser. Back to Milvievic, to Adams, to the Nasser, Milvievic. There needs to be, oh, Wamasaka, was he? Oh, up ended in the box, just barely. Milvievic with the penalty attempt, and he hits it right at Smithies, but he gets the rebound and buries it. Not quite sure what Smithy was, was doing there, but I'll definitely take it. Was that the first? Yeah, that was the first shot that hit Smithy's. I'm not worried about that. Oh, Milvievic's getting tired. And Hope just got a yellow. Okay, after this, Adams to Milvievic. His pass goes right to Gunnarsson, though. Nikedia driving right, and long shot. Milvievic's going to come off for MacArthur. Even though he scored his... Fitness is not the best. He's at 63%. Uh, let's see here. Dan is going to come on for Hoat, which is nice because we just took Milvievic off. So it's a vice captain off, captain on, even though it's Dan, and I'm not happy with him. And we're going to save our last sub just in case anything happens here in the last 15 minutes of the match. We're also going to go down to balance the last five minutes of the match or so. Hennessy. Out to Juan Basaka. Centers it to MacArthur. Back to Basaka. Adams. Oh, he loses the ball. Camarasa to Nikedia. Oh, good grief. That's like the fourth shot Nikedia's had like that. Riedewald, the throw in. Benasser. Oh, a jetty? Oh, he headed it over the crossbar. It was a good attempt, though. Riedewald, the throw in. Sorloth. Oh, right to Nikedia, but that is the game. Now, a 2-1 win against the worst team in the league is still a 2-1 win against the worst team in the league. We probably could have gotten more out of this game if I hadn't been on defensive for two-thirds of the match. I love to blame the fact that I'm sick, but I just didn't notice it. I love to blame the new bifocals, but I just didn't notice it. Now, we are currently 11th in the league on 35 points. Man United is 9th in the league at 36 points. The, the, the new goal this season is to finish above Man United which is a possibility still. Well, that's Zaha out for probably the rest of the season, four to seven weeks. Good thing I got Aaron's in. Eight games left in the season. We are going to come back for... You know what? We're going to come back for the Brighton game. It's at home. It's the A23 Derby. Why not? And then Huddersfield is going to be the last game of the season. And we'll do an end-of-season recap as well. I would like to think that this run of form of games here, we haven't lost in five games, has been kind of the turnaround of the season. And I don't know what I've done differently. I mean, it's, it could be the lone players I brought in. I haven't really changed the tactics much. Zaha was back healthy, but now he's out the rest of the season. Had a couple teams in China make an offer for him too. The big thing with Zaha is... And I want to give thanks to FM Mucci for pointing this out in his own Crystal Palace save. Uh, the basis of his save was that he sold Zaha off, and he's trying to succeed without Zaha in the lineup. And frankly, he's doing a much better job than I am. Uh, I have the injuries, I have the unavailables filtered off, that's why. Uh, let's go. Wilfred Zaha. Contract info. Well, that's odd. It doesn't have it here. I wonder where Mucci went to see it there. Anyhow, Man United has a 50% sell-on because they had Zaha when Crystal Palace bought him. That was the kicker they put on there. They get 50%. So any money you sell Zaha for, you sell him for 50 million pounds, you're only getting 25 at best. It's, it's insane, but honestly, it's not the worst contract I've seen. So... Oh, let's go back to the schedule here. Yep, definitely Brighton. And then Huddersfield last game of the season. We're going to finish above Man United. That's the goal. 
If you liked what you've seen and heard, please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel for more content. Questions, criticisms, comments, leave them down below. I will answer them as fast as I can. My name is FM Jellico. I thank you for watching.